My friends, this Sunday's reading is from the Gospel according to Luke. Luke chapter 22, verse 14, through chapter 23, verse 56. The Passion according to Luke. It is too long for us to give a audible reading here, so what I would like you to do is please take the time to read this passage in your own Bible. It's very important that we see the distinctions between the various Passion accounts in the three synoptic Gospels, Mark, Matthew, and Luke, and also in the Gospel according to John, which we read on Good Friday. In ancient Mediterranean peasant culture of the past, achieving masculine identity is a lifelong challenge. This is so because prepubescent boys are routinely brought up exclusively by the women and totally lack a male role model. Now you might be thinking, well, what about St. Joseph? I have so many images in my head of St. Joseph being so close and intimate with Jesus, the early young Jesus, prepubescent Jesus. We have to get these Western fantasies out of our head and stop committing ethnocentrism on the Middle Eastern males, Jesus and Joseph, and the Twelve, John the Baptist, Paul, and others. Upon entering the harsh male world around the age of puberty, Middle Eastern boys must learn to become men, that is, Mediterranean men. One sign of manhood in this culture is the ability to endure tremendous physical punishments, torments, and pain without flinching or crying or complaining. Hebrew wisdom literature, particularly the documents called Proverbs and Sirach, served as the child-rearing books of their day. They repeatedly encouraged Middle Eastern fathers to punish their sons physically, never their daughters. Sirach chapter 30 verse 1 reads, he who loves his son will whip him often. Sirach 30 verse 12. Beat his ribs while he is young, or else he will become stubborn and disobey you. Everything we know and say about God is rooted in and based upon our human experience. Culture plays a major role in shaping our human experience. The inspired authors of the Gospels and the other works of the Bible are no different. In the Bible, the Mediterranean relationships between fathers and sons serve the inspired authors as their model for imagining how God would behave toward human beings and how the human being ought to respond to God. Biblical heroes, all of them Middle Eastern Mediterranean heroes, illustrate the point. Consider the obedient servant described by 2nd Isaiah, who suffers undeservedly and in silence. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. This servant who represents Israel collectively, and other biblical figures, like the authors of laments in the book of Psalms, for example Psalm 22, who suffer innocently yet obediently to God's designs, served as models of proper adult male behavior for Middle Eastern young boys. My friends, unlike our American and Western congenial Jesuses, the Gospels portray Jesus as a very typical Mediterranean male. The Lucan Jesus begins as an obedient youngster. After returning from the pilgrimage to Jerusalem, he went down with his parents and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. As an adult, the Lucan Jesus is obedient to his sky vault patron. Luke 22, verse 42. Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. The author we call Luke omits this line from his version of the Lord's Prayer and places it here for greater effect. Jesus imitated biblical heroes in his life. The Mediterranean Luke and the other evangelists, Mediterraneans all, show this by drawing on 2nd Isaiah and on Psalms 22 and 69 in writing about Jesus. Luke's observation that they cast lots to divide his clothing certainly borrowed from Psalm 22. The taunt of the leaders, he saved others, let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one, echoes Psalm 22 as well. Jesus ranks among the finest biblical heroes who suffered silently, without complaining. The Passion stories certainly make this point emphatically. They present Jesus as a macho Mediterranean male. The anonymous homilist who wrote the text we call Hebrews interpreted Jesus' Passion this way. Because he was a son, 
He learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. What does this mean for believers who suffer? The homilist, himself a Mediterranean, explains, Endure trials for the sake of discipline. God, seen as a Mediterranean, is treating you, Mediterranean males, as sons, Mediterranean sons. For what Mediterranean son is there whom his Mediterranean father does not discipline? We, Mediterraneans, have had earthly Mediterranean fathers to discipline us, and we respected them. Should we not much more be subject to the father of spirits and live? God, seen as a Mediterranean, disciplines us, Mediterraneans, for our good. Read the entire passage, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 3 through 11. Tell me, is this written for Americans and Western people? Is this written about Americans and Westerners? There are at least two cultural challenges in this Sunday scripture reading and the mystery we Christians celebrate. One is to read an accurate translation of the ancient text. Inclusive language translations that omit son in the Hebrews passage as offensive to modern women and replace it with the plural children misrepresent Mediterranean culture and the Bible, which neither states nor implies that girls should be physically punished. And they unwittingly give permission to contemporaries, fundamentalists and other biblical literalists, who use the Bible as warrant for behavior to physically punish girls as well as boys. The second challenge is how to translate a value or behavior from one culture, in which it is acceptable and normal, into another culture in which the same value or behavior is considered an abuse. Experts in human violence observe that every form of known family violence is acceptable in some cultures, but considered abuse in others. In the Passion story, the Mediterranean author we call Luke definitely proposes the Middle Eastern male hero Jesus as a model to follow and imitate. This challenges modern Western believers to reconsider the biblical image and their own image of God, their image of God's will, their understanding of suffering, be it co-redemptive suffering, innocent suffering, or any suffering, their grasp of what it means to respond to suffering, and other related ideas. It still remains for all of us to devise appropriate ways to follow and imitate the Mediterranean Jesus that are in harmony with values Western culture considers humane.